Hello, hello, hello. I'm very happy to see you, my friend. <laughs> How are you? Uh, tired from the trip? Don't worry. We have all the time in the world to enjoy the sights and sounds. You have chosen a perfect place for a vacation. I will show you a side of Finland that not many people know about. We might not know each other yet, but I think we will become great friends during your time here. <laughs> You were dropped off at the main camping site. This place is usually full of tourists and campers, but it's hunting season now, so we should have the reserve to ourselves. Go ahead and open the outpost. So hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. And may I welcome you to Revon Tuli Coast. This is my first look and this video is going to be all about my first impressions and basically everything I did last night as soon as I had access to the map. I went around and unlocked a load of outposts, I shot a lot of different species and let me just say my first impressions of this map is that it is incredible. I have had so much fun on this map already and I've explored probably about half of it. I still have a lot of exploring to do, i barely done anything with water waterfowl hunting so I've still got to go and put up all my setups and go and hunt all the different species but yeah I've done a lot of upland bird hunting and it's been really really fun the environment is incredible the map is beautiful I just absolutely love it so starting off here we're going into one of the new outposts which of course has a bed in it and the equipment over here and the first thing I did was go into my equipment and change my loadout and take a look at all of the new callers and take a look at all of the callers that have had their images updated. So basically just taking a look at all the callers because all of the callers have had a little bit of love. They have all been made to look a little bit more realistic and they pop a lot better. They just look a lot nicer and a lot more, like I said, a lot more realistic. And this already had me super excited as I was looking through this because it just, is like a quality of life thing just seeing those improvements and they just look really cool I was really happy to see that and then of course taking a look at the new decoys and of course there's the old some of the old decoys there but some of the brand new ones for some of the new species and I was just taking a look and seeing what I had what I didn't have yet because some uh, some decoys and stuff came with the map and yeah they all look really really fantastic and it's not just the display images for the callers and stuff that have had some love I noticed that some of the blinds and stuff seem to look a little bit different in the inventory as well as well as the tent they look completely different in your inventory now a lot nicer looking and I noticed that I had one of the water layout blinds already in my inventory so that's definitely going to be something that I go and set up at some point I'm probably going to do the next video I would guess probably on waterfowl hunting as this one does focus mainly on the upland birds but yeah I'm just I couldn't wait to get out onto the map so I quickly sorted my inventory out and then I was ready to just jump uh, straight into it so just running away from where we started off i could see that there was something something green and normally when you see these little green icons there's a uh, like a point of interest or something but this actually turned out to be one of the new boat crossings or i say new boat crossings it's the boat crossings that we had on like mississippi but now they have like a little icon so you know that those boats are actually interactable and you can actually use them to traverse the water waterways so they'll take you in a straight line across from where you were to a different point and you can see here that once you've used it it will actually show that straight line on your map so it's just like a little quick way of getting across some of the larger bodies of water these are static it's not like you can control them or anything they're just sort of point to point transport sites but they do actually have the little logo now so that they're easier to actually see and know where, which boats are actually usable I then started to run to the nearest lookout tower, I pick up a max weight lynx track and I get my first call from a male capicaylee. How cool is that? 
if you guys have been watching any of my videos, you'll know how much I love the Capicale. They are one of my favourite birds in real life, and I've always wanted them to be in the Hunter Call of the Wild. And they're one of my top favourite species in the game now, if not my most favourite. I just absolutely love them. They've got so much attitude, they're so beautiful, and I just think they're really awesome. So for my first call on the new map to be from a male Capicale, it was ironic and perfect and I was just so happy and I had to go and try and get this thing down. I wanted to see one for myself and I was sneaking around for a little bit but this guy did actually end up spot spotting me and he starts to flee and he actually flies straight over the top of me. So I managed to pop a couple of shots as he's actually flying here but then he had, ends up landing as well in the uh, little bit of an opening just there so I put a second shot in just to finish him off. But let's take a look at one of these guys in game up close. What a bird. Like, what a bird. These guys are so, so cool. So beautiful. And the models have so much detail in them. All of the individual feathers are just incredibly detailed. Really, really amazing. Hats off to the artists. And taking a look at this guy in the harvest screen, he is a gold a dark plumage type and he is just gorgeous. Look at that. In that sort of pose where he'd landed, that's just incredible with his wings open like that. All the detail in the feathers around the tail is just incredible. I just, what a bird. What a bird. I am going to be looking to try and get as many diamonds of these guys as possible. And you can see all the different requirements there on screen as well. Absolutely incredible. Now, I then carried on to the nearest lookout tower, and whilst we're heading up here, I can tell you another little bit of information. I worked out very quickly that the tracking thing that we had, where you could pick up any track and then open your map and you'd get the fur type of that animal, that's gone now. You actually need to pick up disturbed veg to get the fur types again, or plumage types if we're talking about birds. So yeah, you can't just pick up any track anymore and get the fur type or plumage type of that animal. You have to find disturbed veg so that was really interesting and something i had to adapt to very 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 quickly because you know we're so used to picking up tracks and just opening the map and seeing what fur type it is and you'll actually see here there's a perfect demonstration of it picking up some disturbed veg there and you can see there's a lot of stuff that says unknown and until you pick up the uh, the disturbed veg it will say unknown plumage type or unknown fur type now so yeah very interesting, but that is something that will seemingly be coming with this update. I then, as you can see, got a warning call from a male brown bear. Now, I was very keen to take a look at a brown bear, but I only had the 243 and the shotgun on me, as I was mainly going around just opening up uh, different outposts and lookout towers and stuff, and I wanted my tents with me, so I was just carrying those two guns as I was mainly focusing on the birds and, like, the raccoon dogs. But I decided I'd take out this female brown bear with a headshot from the 243, just so that we can get a look at her. I know it's not ethical, but I just wanted to get a look at one of the brown new models for the brown bear for myself in game and doesn't it just look magnificent all of that fur detail it's just so furry and fluffy it looks so good and the faces on them look so much more realistic just absolutely gorgeous i mean look at the difference in the harvest screen i was pretty happy with that shot as well right in the middle of the brain but that is beautiful light brown fur type really really gorgeous and the new harvest screen as well looks awesome with the darker background and of course the new harvest checks there you can see i used the wrong ammo and i damaged the trophy organ there so those are in red and got a light little line through them so i failed those harvest checks and i think that that's just a really nice way of displaying it i think it looks a lot better now, speaking of bears, I also came across this last night, which I thought you guys would find interesting. Again, a female, so taking it out with a 243 headshot. But you guys might know what this is just from looking at it. I thought I might know what it was from when I spotted it in the distance and picking up the disturbed veg confirmed my thoughts. This is a spirit brown bear with the new models. Isn't it beautiful? absolutely stunning 
all of those shades of like greys and silvers in the fur. What a beautiful looking bear. Getting diamonds of these is going to be so cool. Anyone who gets a diamond spirit brown bear now, I think it's so much cooler than they used to be because they are just so much more beautiful. The, no, like, the models are so much more realistic, but the fur itself just looks just so much more beautiful. I was so incredibly happy to actually find one of these so that I could show you guys. And yeah, that's why I tracked her down. That first shot was terrible. She wouldn't give me a brain shot, so I tried to go for a heart shot, but it failed completely. So I just took her out with that brain shot just so that I could show you guys. And I just put it into my saved harvest there just in case I needed it for a thumbnail or anything. But yeah, that's your first look at a spirit brown bear with the new models. So yeah, pretty cool. I was really, really excited to actually see that. And like I said, when I saw it in the distance, I thought I might know what it was. And yeah really cool to actually track down. I also ended up finding some rock ptarmigan last night. So you will have seen that I got a warning call from one. I snuck towards where I got the warning call from a little bit and then started to run to try and flush them up. And I was just scanning here with the shotgun trying to see if I could see any to actually shoot. I see a male capercaillie running away. There's a black grouse there as well, a female black grouse. And then you have the female rock ptarmigan there that just took off. Now I did actually manage to hit that just as it went into the landing animation unfortunately and the ptarmigan on this map the rock and the willow ptarmigan you do need to hit whilst they're airborne and it will count as grounded if they are hitting the ground or if they are like in the landing animation so if they're on the ground obviously they'll be grounded but if they're in that landing animation where they're sort of coming down with their legs out like this it will all also count as grounded but this is my first look at a rock ptarmigan it's a female and it's a molting plumage type and it's absolutely beautiful but you can see there on the uh, on the left hand side you'll see the grounded little notification saying that you know this was in the grounded state technically because it was landing and therefore I don't get a medal. You don't get a medal with grounded birds, but it's a female. I wasn't too fussed. I was just happy to actually get one and get my first look at it and it's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really, really love the ptarmigan. Both the rock and the willow ptarmigan are absolutely stunning. Now, last night I ended up shooting a lot more willow ptarmigan than rock ptarmigan and we're actually going to take a look at some of the willow ptarmigan that I found last night and some of the different plumage varieties. So you will have just seen me shoot this female willow ptarmigan there. Really gorgeous bird and I was really enjoying the challenge of actually shooting these guys in the trees. I thought it was really, really fun. But just look at all of the different shades in this bird's feathers. Really, really incredible. And picking her up, she's a brown plumage type. And it looks like I hit it somewhere in the leg there. And it's only a silver, but that again, not too fussed about the score. I'm just more interested in seeing the actual animal. And just the feathers on this are absolutely gorgeous. The amount of detail that the artists have put into all the different bird feathers on this map is awesome. So I ended up coming across a little group of willow ptarmigan where I actually managed to shoot a few of them from the group. So you will have just seen me take a couple out there, but there was also a few more flying around. And I managed to hit a couple more as well. And this gave me a good opportunity to look at the male and female for two different plumage types for these guys. Now, unfortunately, I missed the shots at this one because I just couldn't get it lined up right. But the next one that takes flight, I managed to actually drop that one. So I managed to down four for us to take a look at, like I said. And I ended up getting a male of one plumage type and a female of one plumage type and then a male and a female of another plumage type. So this is the first plumage type we're going to take a look at which is absolutely gorgeous and perhaps my favourite for the willow ptarmigan. It's called bicolor and it is absolutely beautiful. So you've got this reddish reddish brown colour there on the head with of course the red eyebrows. Then you've got sort of darker brown feathers on the back contrasting with white. Absolutely gorgeous. Then we have this one here, which as you can see, 
you've got some of the sort of brown shades from the female we saw before mixed in with white and this is actually a molting female and i think it's gorgeous and this one actually scored gold and that makes me wonder if the females can get up to diamond i will be very very curious to actually see i haven't found any really close male or female so yeah i'll be really interested to see if males and females can make it or only the females now coming across to this one that i dropped this is a male molting plumage type so you will have just seen the female now we have the male and i think that's again really really beautiful so many different colors are actually mixed in there it's all different shades of brown but i think there's so much color in there that it looks awesome and then picking this final one up this is a female bicolor so we had the male bicolor then a male and female molting and now a female bicolor absolutely awesome i don't know how i got you know that lucky to drop them in that particular order getting a pair of each out of that little flock of four but well there was i think five or six individuals in that group but out out of the four i dropped i got a pair of those two uh, plumage types so i thought that was pretty cool now nearby i ended up finding a, another willow ptarmigan i think this one may have been part of that group or a group that was very close by as it was nervous but this one struck my eye and i think you guys will see why it's pure white now i didn't know if this was going to be some kind of rare i didn't think it was because you can get ptarmigan that look like this so i was just thinking this is probably just another uh, different plumage type and as you can see it is a white plumage type absolutely beautiful i want a diamond one of these so so bad we didn't get to see one of these before and yeah i knew that this was definitely different i knew the bicolor was one that one of the plumage types we hadn't seen and i knew the white was as well so i was really excited to actually show you guys that and i was pretty excited to show you guys this as well this is actually an outpost on this map it's like a little wooden shelter with a fire in front of it and this is actually an outpost and you get that cool little animation when you actually unlock it where you see the uh the camping stuff going into the uh the little shelter which i thought was pretty darn cool now something else that i found really really cool as i was wandering around exploring rebontuli was seeing the geese walking around now this was the first time i actually saw it and the geese seem to be walking in little circles now i don't think this is intended i think this was some kind of little bug where they were just call like walking around in these little particular circles and once i made them go alert they started to walk a little bit more normally and then you can see them all take off but it was just cool to see geese actually walking around being geese and here we have a flock that was behaving much more normally actually feeding properly with the proper animations and this looked really really cool it's just so fabulous to see geese actually out in the environment rather than no you know only going over the top of you whilst you're calling them in over decoys you know this makes them so much more part of the environment and i really love that even heading up here into sort of the more open parts of the map and i found a flock of tundra bean geese actually feeding and something else as well that you'll notice in some of these clips is just how many animals are there actually are in certain areas like for example there you had the moose the white tail and those tundra bean geese as well as mountain hare capercaillie and black grouse all feeding in the same area it was an absolute haven for animals and it was really really good fun to sit there and take some of them out now this was one of the lookout towers that i came across here on revon Tuli. now not all of them are like this there was only a few that i found like this but it's really cool it's kind of like a modern lookout tower and it's got these posters in it as if you were a guest who was coming here to watch the wildlife it very much reminded me of when i go to like a uh, a wildlife preserve or a waterfowl uh, preserve and you know you, you go into one of the the hides to go and watch the birds and they have these posters up telling you what birds are there what birds have been seen giving you little id tips and stuff like that and just everything about this reminded me of that 
and you know even just the wood and how the wood is making up this tower it just reminded me of sitting in one of those bird hides to sit and watch wildlife so i thought that was really really cool they just look like an awesome structure and i really didn't expect to find something like this here on rebel Tuli. and it's a small detail when we're here to hunt but i just think it's really cool now, I was going to unlock this outpost, and I found this really cool. Going overhead, we had a flock of grey lag geese, and this was the first time I saw some grey lag geese, and I just love it that you'll see them quite regularly flying over, over the top of where you are. I was pretty much never in a point where there wasn't some kind of animals around me, whether it was geese overhead or ducks overhead, or moose and whitetail in the forest, or mountain hares or raccoon dogs. There was everything, just everywhere. The whole map feels so incredibly alive. And like I said, you can go running through the forest and you'll just, you will find animals. You don't have to hunt drink zones. In fact, I didn't hunt anything in a drink zone yesterday, which was awesome. Now there you will have seen me get my first warning call from a raccoon dog. And here I see my first ever raccoon dog, which is a level three female. And I drop her there with the 243. Now, there's going to be a little uh, sort of compilation of some different raccoon dogs that I shot yesterday because I found a few different fur types and all of them look really, really cool. These things are beautiful. And something I want to give the artists huge credit for is the amount of detail in the face and the mouth. There's so much detail on this model. Like even as you sort of go around it here and scoot around you can see the ridges in the top of the mouth that is insane levels of detail really really fabulous job and not to mention the fur detail on these things it's incredible and so so beautiful i cannot wait to try and find rares of these guys can you imagine an albino raccoon dog it must look incredible or maybe there's like piebalds and melanistics and stuff like that Oh, I can't wait to see what different varieties there's going to be. I can see me chasing the rares for these guys for quite a while because I bet they're going to look absolutely incredible. Now, this was a different raccoon dog I found with a different fur type, but this one was also quite large. As you can see, this is actually a mythical raccoon dog. So I dropped it there. First look at a really big one. So I was very excited by this. And this guy kept running for a very long time. So I had a sneaking suspicion he would be quite big. And then I spotted him and he was a mythical. So really happy to get one of an actually decent size. But I knew straight away that this looked different to the female that I'd shot before. So just looking for a slightly nice background there. So picking him up, he's a grey. So this is a grey fur type compared to the, I think the female was light brown. And this guy is huge at 9.10 when diamond is 9.29. So I'm thinking that these can probably hit diamond at mythical. I obviously don't know yet, but that seems really, really close. So it'll be interesting to shoot some mythicals and see just how close they can get to diamond. And if some of them can clutch it. Because we know with uh, Grey Fox, there's mythical diamonds of those that have been shot. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, mythical diamonds for these guys are also a thing. So yeah, going to be really interested to see that. But then I also found this guy who immediately as it was running away, I noticed it looked different. Kind of had a, almost a bluish look to it. And this is actually, actually a black-white fur type. Black-white is a fur type that we've only ever seen on feral goats. So I was very, very surprised to see it on a raccoon dog. No idea if it's a rare or not. So I did put it into my saved harvest so that I could use it for later for multi-mounts, which I'm going to do for a video as well. And yeah, really, really cool. I like the raccoon dogs a lot. I found a lot of them. So that was a lot of fun. Now, moving on to take a look at the hazel grouse that I came across yesterday. Now, unfortunately, I only shot female hazel grouse. I had a really, really bad time with actually getting uh, getting any shots at any males. But the females are so gorgeous that it really didn't matter. They are really, really beautiful. And obviously, the males are going to be gorgeous as well if this is what the females look like. Really stunning. Now, this one is a brown plumage type. And I thought this was really seriously pretty. I loved all the detail and, again, all the different shades of brown in the feathers. And then later on, I ended up shooting this one. And this one has probably my favourite plumage type I've seen so far for the hazel grouse. Light brown. 
How gorgeous is that? This thing's feathers remind me of tawny owl feathers. Same sort of hues in those feathers as a tawny owl. And I think it looks really, really beautiful. So, so gorgeous. I hope the males look somewhat similar to the females with this plumage type. And if they do, I'm definitely going to be looking for a light brown diamond male. Now, this was my first ever encounter with a male black grouse that I could actually get a shot at and managed to take him out there. I'd actually just set up a tent in this area because it's one of the nice open areas towards the top of the map. And yeah, this guy came flying out across and managed to drop him. Absolutely beautiful. I feel like this whole video is me saying really really cool or really really beautiful but that's just how i feel about this map it's gorgeous and everything in it is gorgeous and cool and awesome and brilliant and i mean just look at this bird it is just so beautiful and the hues in that sort of dark body of the dark blue and dark green it reminds me of a melanistic male pheasant they're just really seriously pretty. And then, of course, you've got the bright red, I call them eyebrows, the bright red eyebrows are there on the head, which just offset everything. And then the white patches of feathers as well. Just really beautiful. And this guy was also a gold, not too far off from diamond, only 114 when 120 makes diamond. So not too far off. A I wouldn't be surprised if level 2 diamonds are a thing. You know, level 2 diamond birds are a thing for all the other species, so wouldn't really surprise me um, when, you know, we get level 2 diamond quail and level 2 diamond pheasants and stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we can see level 2 diamond grouse. Now, something I was really, really curious to find yesterday was a mountain hare, because we've seen absolutely nothing about these guys. And the first thing... They're not that easy to find because, as you will probably see by what's going on on the screen, they flee properly. They don't do what most rabbits and hares in the game do and flee and then stop. These little guys will keep on running. So that makes them a challenge to actually get close to because if you make them spook, you've actually got to try and hit them while they're on the run like I did there or wait for them to calm down and then try and get a shot at them. But the mountain hare models, by far now my favourite hare species in the game. These guys are so pretty. So, 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 so gorgeous. Like, this is a light grey and I've got a few different fur types of these guys to actually show you in this video. And just how beautiful is that? Just stunning. I think these guys look really, really good. I don't know why we haven't seen anything on them because I think this is honestly a really fabulous species. I don't know if I'm the only one looking at this thinking, wow, that looks really good. But I think it looks amazing. The big feet and everything is just so pretty. Now, I found, again, one of the really nice open areas in the top of the map where there's like a hill and it's a really good spot to actually sit on top of and shoot birds and uh and the hares that you can see off of the top of this hill so yeah you can see here i can see down into this nice open area and there is a mountain hare there so i'm just going to take him out with the 22 there was also some black grouse there as well but look at this one this is a light brown and i think this is again really really pretty looking and something that I absolutely love about mountain hares in real life, and they've done it so well in the game, is that sort of paler fur around the eye. I just think that that's a really gorgeous feature, and I think they've done a really fantastic job of capturing it. But now we'll take a look at my favourite fur type, I think, for the mountain hare. Dark grey. To me, this is what a mountain hare looks like. This is sort of my iconic sort of... Uh, what I think of when I think of a mountain hare. This is what I think of. And it just looks so good. I think that is really, really awesome. So happy with that, honestly. I'm honestly blown away that we haven't seen anything previously on the mountain hare because well done, EW. I think they look really awesome. And yeah, that was really cool. Now, whilst running around exploring, I came across this little uh, lake here where there were some mallards chilling and I noticed there was a female that looked really, really different. And unfortunately, you will have seen they took off. So I didn't get to uh, actually shoot it that time. So I came back later on and I was going to just sit here and wait. 
and you'll see there's all the geese that started circling overhead and i'm just here waiting to see if these mallards turn up that's where they were last time so i keep scanning over there and you're just going to notice more and more birds keep just turning up so we've got the geese here flying overhead and then i heard the call of some teal as well so we end up with the geese the teal and mallards all sort of circling over this water and it just ends up being a really really cool sight and i have to mention that in this area i had also found lynx and raccoon dogs and moose so there's a lot going on on this map like just from bird life alone there seems to constantly be something going on which is really cool in my head so we can actually see one of the uh, geese coming into land there and actually landing amongst the trees which is really cool and so they started to come into land and then here we'll see some of the uh, i think these were the teal actually coming in yeah the eurasian teal which was awesome because i love the eurasian teal call and i'd i'd wanted to see some so i was very excited about that and i was looking carefully to see if the mallards were going to come in at the same time and then as i'm spotting around we see mallards coming in and i was pretty sure that was the female that i saw before that looked quite odd and it landed and yeah i could see that there was something different with that one it looked like a piebald but not like the piebalds we're used to so i was just looking there and comparing because we know that the mallards got a improved model with you know better looking feathers and everything so i was very curious to shoot this and see if it was a new type of uh, a type of rare or just a different plumage type you know there's anything could have changed so i was curious to see what was going to go on there but it's also cool seeing the teal coming into land there at the same time so this is probably somewhere that i might set up a duck set up because this seems to be a really po quite a popular spot for for the birds and it's cool seeing them land and actually seeing the, the the splashes of the water i think it just looks really really well done so getting the 22 out now i'm not gonna shoot a lot of ducks and geese with the 22 i don't want to i could very easily just sit and snipe quite a lot of birds on this map but it's not really how i want to hunt this map i want to put out my decoys and sit in a blind and call them in and sort of work the birds kind of like you do in classic rather than just sit and take them off the water this was an exception because i hadn't got any setup set up yet and i wanted to take this one down to be able to show you guys in this video what this one was and how the new mallards look with this plumage type now this is actually a piebald as you can see quite clearly and doesn't it just look stunning absolutely beautiful the new i guess new modeling that these guys have had looks incredible the feathers are so much more realistic the models are so much more realistic and the piebalds just look gorgeous this is only a female and at this point i was unsure whether these guys are a rare now or not i've seen a couple more since since then so i'm guessing these are still like an uncommon but it's just really beautiful and i put it you know i taxed it for now just to put in the lodge again maybe for a thumbnail or something but it's just really really pretty and again the the remodels that have happened and the reworks for this map you know the, the overall waterfowl rework the remodels for the mallards and for the brown bears have been incredible i haven't yet shot a canada goose to see if they look any different i think they do based off of what i've seen from walking around but i will set up a canada goose set up later to shoot a few and see you know see them up close in the harvest screen and see if we can see any differences but yeah i you know i didn't really get any uh anything really rare or any diamonds on my first day but i was just going around exploring opening the outposts looking at you know finding the lookout towers and stuff and working out where the good areas are so really really happy with how day one went now i had to include this because this is a new thing and it's also kind of hilarious i spent ages trying to get over to this outpost and then slipped down there because i wasn't paying full full attention i was doing something else at the same time i think i was asking someone a question and this is now the new respawn mechanic it like flies you back over to the last outpost you were at i quite like that it's better than just the the rag doll of your character on screen so yeah i just thought i'd include that because again that's a new thing and i thought you guys might want to see it 
But that is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. That is my first impressions of Revon Tuli and my first day, basically, all condensed down to as short as I could make it. I know this has been a little bit of a longer one, but I hope you guys uh, will like seeing all the different fur types and plumage types of stuff that I found. And yeah, I'm absolutely in love with this map. It is fantastic. That's my overall review of day one. It's just absolutely awesome. And I cannot wait to get back out there later today. And yeah, you can just see. It's just beautiful. It is really beautiful. And I'm just so, so happy. And it's just such a fun map to hunt. Because like I said, you don't have to hunt drink zones. Very easy in this map to just run through the forests and shoot animals and birds as you're running along, which is just so cool to me but yeah that's going to be it for this video guys thank you so so much for watching and for all your support as always it's thanks to you guys that i get to do this and it's a real honor and a privilege so yeah i really really do hope all of you enjoyed this and that it was interesting or informative or useful or yeah all of those good things i really really appreciate everything you guys have done and you know for getting me to this point it really does mean the world and like i said it's an honor and a privilege to be able to do this and to make content to show you guys so thank you but yeah thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you